Good morning once again. Uh, Pastor David here from Andrew Apostolic Church. Welcome you to our digital service again this Sunday. We're going to have a number of things this Sunday. You want to hear from God's Word. We're going to have a thought by Les Walsam on the ladies from the church. We're going to hear a little recital on violin from Samuel, Pastor Tom's son. It's lovely that we still stay connected even though they're in America and we're here. And we, we can catch up with them that way. We're going to have a ministry and song from our sister Miriam, one of our deaconesses. We're going to hear from God's Word. There's an exciting advert around an event that's happening later this month, the Apostolic Church Next Conference online for leaders and development of leaders. It's uh, going to be an exciting time on Pentecost Sunday when we're going to have a, a nationwide service broadcast when the speaker will be Pastor Tim Jack. Looking forward to all of that. Uh, as well as hearing from God's Word, we're going to be breaking bread together as well. And of course, also, we're going to be seeing our doorstep blessing, and you'll be blessed this week by some more people from the doorsteps. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand over now to Liz as she shares her thought with us, just to get our service started today. Thanks, Liz. Peace in the storm. It can be very easy when life presents us with difficult and tragic circumstances to lose our peace. During this pandemic, with all its uncertainties and chaos, when loved ones are isolated from each other and death has taken its toll on many families all over the world, where are we to find peace? John 14 and 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God's peace is a gift that all of us can experience. We as Christians can and sometimes do lose our peace, but only if we take our eyes off Jesus and put our focus on the circumstances that surround us. It may be a child's serious illness, a son or daughter's marriage breakup, financial um, burdens, the loss of a job, or even this COVID-19 resulting in the death of a loved one. When we succumb to fear and worry, we then open a door to stress and anxiety, which can and does ultimately rob us of God's peace. After Jesus was crucified, the disciples who had been with him throughout his ministry and witnessed his many miracles he had performed were all gathered together in an upper room, hiding behind closed doors, fearing for their lives. I can imagine it must have been an awful ordeal for them to have spent so much time with Jesus and now he was dead and gone. I can visualise a uh, them all sitting there in the middle of their conversations about his betrayal and death, also with their fears regarding their own future, probably at their own wit's end. But suddenly Jesus shows up and the words he said to them were, peace be with you. And that's what he's saying to us, to you and to me, peace be with you. Jesus never promised us a trouble-free life. In John 16 and 33, he told his disciples, I have spoken these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Those two little words that mean so much, in me, in Christ, as we remain in him and keep our focus on Jesus, we can and will know his peace. Some years ago, I went through a very tough time. Things were coming against me from every angle and I couldn't understand why. I was very confused about a lot of things, but as I focused on these circumstances and through doubt and fear, I eventually lost my peace. And I can tell you now, it was horrible. I ended up with a serious anxiety disorder and eventually lost my memory and they got up in hospital with a condition known as transglobal amnesia. 
which is brought on by stress. You see, I had taken my eyes off Jesus and tried to work through everything myself, focusing on the problems, worrying myself sick. That didn't end well for me at all, and it took me only through God's grace and help over two years to eventually recover. One thing that greatly helped me though during my recovery was memorizing scripture. I would say them every night as I was going to sleep and I still do that every single night to this day. And I would recommend this practice to anyone who's gone through any kind of difficulty in their life, no matter how great or small that may seem, because God's word is life-giving. One of the most well-known verses in scripture regarding God's peace is found in Philippians 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The dictionary definition of peace is freedom from disturbance, tranquility, a stress-free state of security, calmness. Exodus 33 and 14 says, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. So where is God in the middle of this pandemic? He's right beside you. And as you put your trust in him, you can and will know his peace. Amen. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for that wonderful encouragement that God's peace is with us. It's one of my favourite texts in Scripture in Philippians. The peace of God, the pass of all understanding, guards our hearts and our souls. In the previous few verses to that, it says, you know, bring all things to God in prayer, and supplication, all how we feel, all what's going on with us. As we bring them to God, he brings in peace. And right now, a lot of people need peace. It's wonderful to know that he that he's there watching over us. And one of the things that I, that I like about being able to do things online, even though we can't get out and about is we can still see one another. And right now, we're going to just share a little clip with you of Samuel, Pastor Tom's son. Uh, we miss him from church. He often played his violin with our praise group in church. And we uh, he, he's, he's improving and he sent a little clip playing a song. And so I'm just going to share it with you now. And as he does that, and there's some lovely scenery as well uh, from where Tom is living in North Carolina right now. It's wonderful just to, to know that God's blessing is there. So just be ministered to you as, as Samuel plays the song to us and we, we can just enjoy uh, how he's improving in God and we know that God's going to bless. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wasn't it wonderful to see Samuel again there in North Carolina playing his violin? I'm sure you were singing along as he was playing with you. There's a, we're going to show the, the advert for the next Leaders Conference now. I want to encourage you all as it, to, that this is something we can link into and enjoy uh, in the last weekend of May. And after that, we're going to have a doorstep blessing. And you'll be blessed by some of the people there that, from, that you might have seen for a while. They'll be sharing a blessing with you. So I'm going to share the advert first for next and then the doorstep blessing. After which, I'll be picking up with God's word. So I just pray that you'll be blessed as you hear these things. This year, we are taking our annual leadership conference next online. Next is a conference which exists to inspire, equip and empower all levels of leadership within the Apostolic Church UK. The theme for the conference this year is the new normal. It's a phrase we're hearing much about in this season and together we'll be exploring what the new normal looks like for us as leaders and for us as a movement. If you are currently a leader or if you are an emerging leader, we would love you to join us on Pentecost weekend, Friday the 29th to Sunday the 31st of May. The conference will be hosted live by Sunny Hill Pastors Dom and Lou and is free for all. We are incredibly excited to announce a dynamic lineup of speakers and leaders from around the world. Pastor Sam Monk is the visionary leader of Equippers Church and national movement leader of Acts New Zealand. Pastor Alan Scott is the lead pastor of Vineyard Anaheim in Orange County, California. He is a gifted author, communicator and a leading prophetic voice in our generation. On the Sunday morning, we will broadcast a live Pentecost Sunday celebration for the whole of the UK Apostolic Church. Our speaker will be Pastor Tim Jack, the previous and much-loved national leader of the Apostolic Church UK. The Sunday morning service is a great opportunity for the whole church across the UK to gather as one movement, lifting up the name of Jesus, praying for our nation, and hearing from God through the preaching of his word. On the Friday and Saturday of next, we will be facilitating live leadership conversations, incorporating interactive Q&A sessions. 
Next, we'll also feature worship led by a collective of our very own AC UK churches. You do not want to miss this conference, so make sure to tune in and connect with the next of all that God is doing. For a full itinerary or more information about how to watch and engage with Next, visit our website www.nextconference.uk. feeling well and keeping well and wishes all God's blessing trust everybody is all well the main thing is to keep safe <laughs> good afternoon everyone I just want to say the blessing of the Lord be us all I just pray for every single one that's watching and I pray for a mighty outpour of the Holy Spirit upon you. I just want to thank you for being able to speak. I've been tied down here and locked in and not in great shape, but praise God. You know, there's nothing impossible with God. The strength of God is good for everybody. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you all again. I do miss the church. I miss the people. And uh, it's just one of them things. But praise the Lord. You know, I've got God. And God has been good, and I'm actually at the minute I am reading a book called The Divine Revelations of Heaven. I've got the other one, The Divine Revelations of Hell. Car, uh, what do you call her? Lorraine knows all about that. She read that, so it's good reading anyhow. Like you know, it's just a, ma it's just a, m it is what it is. It's keeping in contact with God, no matter where you are. God's always there with you. And it doesn't matter how you feel or what's happening. I know I am in a lot of pain. I just found out I've got um, my spine's bad. And I've been in the hospital yesterday. But, do you know, I'm still able to get on my feet even if I have crutches. And God's with me in it. And it doesn't matter what anybody thinks or says about you. You know, as long as you're connected with God, that, that's, that's all you need. All you need is God. No matter what goes around you, yeah, I mean, I have been there. I've, I've, you could say you wore the t-shirt and everything else, but it's it's not to do what's outside you and or what's outside and round about or anybody else. It's all to do with God, and it's all to keep connected with God, no matter where we are, no matter what we do. And I praise God that I can talk to Him all the time, and you can too. Just keep connected. It doesn't matter where day. You don't have to be in church to talk to God. You don't have to be anywhere to talk to God. You can go out. I mean, I would talk to him in the car. And wherever I am, it doesn't make no difference. God is still there. He created us. He created the world. And he created everything in us. And just pray too, like, you know, for... Um, I've got a, a prayer about, uh, you know, this virus and all. And I've been asked to send it to somebody. I read it over the phone. And I'll probably maybe get it done for pastor here. And uh, not very good in the mobile. But anyhow, it's uh, it's a it's um, a prayer about what's going on in the world today, and about God and about the virus and all that. So it would bless you because I pray that regular. I pray that morning. I pray that whenever I have a chance to get it in the Bible. And at night when I go to bed. So praise the Lord and God bless you so abundantly in Jesus' name. Wasn't it lovely to see William and Florence and Anne again? And those wonderful blessings that they shared with us and reminding us that we need to stay close to God. In line with that, I want to share with you from God's word. We're going to read from the book of James, from James chapter 4, starting from verse 1 in a moment or two. And after we finish reading that, then I want to share some thoughts with you today on what God's speaking to us from this text of Scripture. James 4, reading from verse 1. What causes fights and quarreling among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. 
when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why Scripture says God opposes the pride but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. This is a well-known text which many of us will have heard. Draw close to God and he will draw close to you. But it's interesting in this text in James, this morning our sister Elizabeth shared with us, or Liz shared that we can know God's peace. And then on the doorstep, blessings and so that we've been new to God. And this fits in very well with what this text is saying. There is some difficulties for us here in, in our modern society at the minute. One of the things that's concerned me recently is the increase of domestic violence that's happening in some of the homes around our nation that the police forces have been picking up on. Because when people are confined in close spaces, their temperament gets the better of them. And so they, people's get frayed around the edges and they they end up doing things and saying things they shouldn't do because things are difficult. And right now, things are difficult for many people. But here in this text, when James is writing this, things was often difficult for the church under persecution. At times in the early church, they, they were not exactly accepted by the, the world around them or the community around them. They were often killed or slaughtered. There was difficulties for them. And so here we find James writing to the church and saying, you know, you fight amongst each other, you fight amongst yourselves, you, you, you're having difficulties at this time. And he, he says, listen, resist this. Resist this temptation. Because we often put our needs ahead of those around us, that's what causes us to sin. He says, you know, you're fighting one another because of, because of this, because you want what you want more than the other person. At the heart of the gospel was a saviour who went to the cross to pay the price for us that we couldn't pay. He gave his life for us. It was a sacrificial act of love. And in that sacrificial act of love, he was putting your well-being and my well-being before his own. And so James here says, listen, you know, seek God. Resist the temptation to put yourself first. Resist the temptation to satisfy your own pleasures. We, we sometimes don't get what we want because we're asking the wrong things. We're going about it the wrong way. We wonder why we're not getting where we want to be. We wonder why we have no peace because we're asking the wrong questions. Many in, in, in the world today are asking the wrong questions. They're, they're striving for stuff. They're envying for stuff that they want to have. You know, can I get this? Can I fix this? If one thing that this uh, current crisis has done is refocus people's priorities. It's not all about the physical things. There's a, we suddenly realize we need more connection with one another. We suddenly realize we need to have a relationship with one another. I was speaking to my, my sister this week. She lived, lives in a, in a village in England. And she was saying, the one thing we've got to know our neighbors better every Thursday night when we are clapping. And one of the things that, that, that this crisis has done is bring people back to that place where it's not about themselves, it's about others. And you know, that's at the heart of the gospel and that's at the heart of the love that God has for you and me. It's about us. The psalmist wrote that, what is man that thou art mindful of him? God's thinking of you today. He's thinking of us. As we heard earlier, he wants to bring you his peace. You might be upset today. You might be annoyed with stuff. 
God wants you to give you his peace. The temptations that come in, as we mentioned a few weeks ago, you know, from the devil, from the world, to, to do the wrong thing and say the wrong thing and behave the wrong way are very, very strong emotional drivers. And sometimes they get the better of us. And James knew that. Because James is saying to the church, he says, resist the devil. Put away these things. Resist the temptation to lose your temper. Resist the temptation to say and do the things you want to do. Choose the right path. Choose the right thing. And so God here is saying to us through the scriptures, when we do that, we can then draw close to him. Now there's a great blessing in being close to God. We heard it mentioned by Anne and her, and her doorstep blessing. We should stay close to God. In God's presence, there is peace that passes understanding. In God's presence, there's a joy that comes to fill our hearts. In God's presence, there's a strength that comes. There's a protection that comes to us when we're with him. And so in this text, James is saying, listen, you know, stop your fighting. Stop getting upset. Don't be worrying about all these other things. When you do that, it brings enmity between us and God. When, when we lose our tempers, when we're doing things wrong, it brings separation from God. When our attitudes are wrong, it brings separation from God. God's word tells us that he couldn't look upon sin. When Jesus cried on the cross, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? At that moment in time, the father could not look on the son because of the weight of the sin that was there. That separated him from the father for that fleeting moment. The first time in... In Jesus' life, he wasn't in complete connection with God. It was because of the weight of sin that was there that brings separation in. It was sin that took Adam and Eve out of the garden and away from God. That separation that came. But here's the wonderful news of Jesus. When we resist the devil, when we draw close to God, when we come into his presence, he comes and he, he sups with us. We heard it there. Do we not understand that our God's a jealous God who wants that, that spirit that's in us to be connected? We were designed to have a relationship with God. You were designed to have a relationship with God. You were designed to know his presence, to know his power, to know his authority, to know his peace, to know his grace. And sin brings separation from that. And so here in James, there's an encouragement to us to resist those temptations. You know, it's, and, and sometimes that's difficult. You know, temptations are hard to resist. Temptation sometimes gets the better of us. You know what I'm talking about. There's a chocolate cake in the fridge. We can't resist. We want to go have a bit. There's a resistance there. It takes effort to do that. It takes effort to resist temptation. But the reward for the effort is great. For the reward in resisting the temptation to do the wrong thing. For the reward in doing what's right. For the reward in giving the extra man for other people is a blessing. That will not only bless them, but bless you. When we resist the devil and free from God comes and lives with us and secures us. And at this difficult time when there's so many temptations, there's temptations to break the rules. There's temptations to... You know, break the two-meter rule to want to go to hug someone, to want to go put your arm around them. There's temptations to walk up behind. I said this a few weeks ago. One of the things that 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 really and you see at the minute when you're in the supermarket or out shopping is people coming too close to one another, and people get really uncomfortable. There's a temptation to to go for that pint of milk that you want when the other person's beside it, instead of waiting and letting them go by. You know, this is a different world for us to live in. Those are minor temptations, but they actually affect other people. You see, when we sin, it does affect others. We often forget that. When you lose your temper, say something or do something, it affects others. Very often those that you love, very often those that are closest to you. And that separates us from God. But God can't look upon sin. God does not tolerate sin. It brings that separation. But when we resist that sin, when we try our best to step away from that, God comes to help us. And that help comes right early. 
And so the Lord wants you to know this morning that as you draw close to him, he's drawn close to you. As you say, God, I can't do this on my own strength. I need your help. He will come and he will help you with that. You know, when Liz was sharing earlier from Philippians, and I said that it's one of my favorite texts in Scripture, we pour out our hearts in prayer and supplication unto God, and the peace of God that passes of all understanding guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. It's that ability to give to God what's inside us, our emotions. When I'm upset, I can share it with him and I feel better. Recently, you may have noticed over a number of weeks, just even before the lockdown came in, there was a big drive around mental health and it says, you know, talk to someone, talk to family, talk to those around you. That as you do that, you feel better. And there is something about when we share our problems, when we share how we feel, we feel better. Well, if sharing with another person makes you feel better, how much more wonderful is it to share with a God who really cares and really knows? Because you can tell me something as a human being and I will have an understanding of it to a degree. I can have empathy with it. But when you come to God and when you come to Jesus with someone, he really knows how you feel. He really knows exactly what's going on. And so when we pour out to him, he brings a peace that is greater and deeper than anybody else can bring you. So here James says, listen, resist the devil, flee from him. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This morning, I'm not going to preach very long because we've had a lot of things in our service. But I do believe this, that God's wanting to draw near to you this morning. I believe that God in his love and his mercy wants to draw close to you. As you pour out your hearts to him, one of the things that James says in this text, there's an element of this text about repentance where he says, you know, turn away from being proud. You know, proudness is, the scripture says, pray comes before a fall. We're so proud we won't ask for help. We won't ask God for help. We won't ask anybody else for help. And that causes us problems. And James says, you know, the pride thing is, is something we have to put away. We need to humble ourselves and realize that God's there to care for us and love us. And I, we, we think we can do it on our own. We think we're, we can do it, we're isolated, we're, we're strong, we can do that. That's not the way it works. We're created to be a body, to be a family, to be in a relationship with God. You were created to be in a relationship with God. And God's calling you back to him this morning. Fight the temptations. Turn to him. Find his strength. Know that when we choose the right thing, when we choose God, we don't end up as an enemy of God. We end up as a friend of God. And as a friend of God, you are open to heaven and all the blessings that Jesus will bring you. And so this morning, I want to encourage you to maintain your relationship with Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior this morning, I want to encourage you to enter into that relationship, to pour out your heart, to say, Father, forgive me. Come and live in my life, and he'll strengthen you. Especially at this difficult time, when our tempers are being free, when the temptations to do the wrong things is there, when the kids are, and the homework is getting too much, when the difficulties of not seeing our friends at school or being able to reach into and not to touch others the way we normally can is too much for us. God's grace is there. His peace is there. Draw close to him today. As you draw close to him, he's drawing close to you. And he wants to touch you afresh this morning. You know, we thank God that by the work of the cross, he has opened the door where you can draw close. When you read in the scriptures of the last days of the crucifixion, the last moments of it, it says that when Jesus gave up the ghost, when he said that as funny as he gave a spirit into the Lord's hands, that the veil in the temple was torn in two. That veil was into the Holy of Holies, into the place where the Jewish people believed that God's presence lived and existed. So the veil, the separating veil, was, was torn in two so that you and I can enter in through Jesus into the presence of God. So as you come in the name of Jesus this morning, as you come under the covering of his precious blood, as you come into his presence, God will give you a peace that passes understanding and a calmness in the difficult situations. There might be homes right now that are feeling 
the tensions. God wants to bring peace and calmness. And you might have situations in your life where there's tension and there's stress and there's strain. God wants to bring calmness. In. Come to God this morning. Lay your life at the foot of the cross and find the peace of Jesus. He's here for you. We're going to break bread together this morning. And as we do that, we're going to remember what Jesus did for us at Calvary. We're going to remember the fact that the veil was torn in two and that the way into that peace, the way into that relationship with Jesus was made by the work of the cross. So as we do that this morning and we come and ask for God to bless us, I'm going to ask William, one of the others in the church, to lead us this morning in prayer and give him thanks for the emblems and for what they represent. So I'm just going to hand over to William now as he prays with us. Just thank you, Lord. Uh, we're here to remember you this morning, Lord. We just thank, Lord, of this bread, Lord, which speaks of your body, which was broken for us. This cup, Lord, uh, which speaks of your blood uh, that was shed for us. Lord, we're not doing this for repetition. We're doing this, Lord, because you paid the debt for us. We just ask you, Lord, to bless these emblems now in Jesus' mighty name. And we say thank you, Lord. We thank William for praying for the emblems this morning. And as God's word tells us, we come round this table together. We break the bread, we partake of the wine in remembrance of what he's done for us. Remembering his broken body. Remembering his blood that was shed for us. And so we take a moment of contemplation this morning. I want to welcome anyone who has asked the Lord into their life as Savior. You're welcome to join us this morning to break bread with us. It's an act of communion, not just with one another, but with God. And saying, yes, Lord, we're asking you and we're asking you to come closer to us. And so the Lord Jesus, the night he was betrayed, took the bread and when he gave thanks, he broke it and he said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same manner after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, that you might show the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord, that as we partake of these emblems, that your grace and your mercy is surrounding our lives. We thank you that your presence is there for us. Lord, as we draw close to you right now, as we draw into your presence, I pray that your peace will guard every heart and every mind that has been listening this morning. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will let us realize that your grace is there for us, your peace is there for us. So, Holy Spirit, just coming up your way even now, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to hand over to Miriam now as she leads us in a song this morning as we come to the close of our service together. Oh, uh-huh. 
into our online service this morning. Pray that you've been blessed. We pray that you will know God's peace, that you will draw close to him. As I believe God has been speaking to many hearts this morning. He wants to draw you a little closer. Not just those that don't know God, but those that do know God. He wants to draw you closer, that you know his peace and his security in a greater way in your life. I'd just like to remind the church that we will have our ongoing Tuesday meeting on social media for prayer and fellowship. And we always enjoy a laugh together as well and our reconnecting with one another over that time. So that will be Tuesday at 8 o'clock. And, of course, next Sunday we'll be having our digital services again as well. And if anyone needs us during the week, stay in contact with one another. It's great. Our, our prayer letter uh, message in line is very active. And there's many comments and that going on that as well. And it's lovely to see people connected through the craft of creations and different things on the page through Facebook. You can continue to watch our, our services on the Antrim Apostolic Church Facebook page or on our Antrim Apostolic Church YouTube channel. You can catch all our services online there. And you're more than welcome. If you want to contact us, you can contact us via Facebook. Uh, and if you need anything from us, we look only too happy to pray with you and bless you. It's good that we can share this way. It's good that we can reach out this way. But I want to let you know afresh today that Yes, we can contact as individuals, but God is drawing close to you right now. And so I just ask his blessing upon you at the close of our time together. Holy Spirit, we thank you that even though we stop speaking, your word continues. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're reaching into people's lives. Lord, you know the need of those right now, those that are worried about exams and results, Lord, that haven't happened, those that are worried about circumstances that they might be facing at work, those that are worried about loved ones at this time those that are worried and distressed over this disease and the way it's affecting our nation. Lord, so many things to cause us to be frustrated and uptight, so many things to cause us to want to do the wrong thing. But Lord, we pray that as we draw close to you, that your grace will keep us, that your love will surround us. Even as we heard in that song, Lord, you're so good to us, Lord God. So Lord, I pray that your goodness will be evident in the land of the living, Lord. Just bless everyone now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.